Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 6 from the May 2010 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question starts by saying Joe Mukram owns and operates a tire shop in Fast Town. During the month of October 2009, he recorded the following information. So we have a little table here showing us the month of October, the transactions and the value of stock. So opening balance is 150 tires or units at $25 each. On October the 10th, he purchased 200 at $27 each. On the 15th, he had a sale, 230 units sold at $50 each. On October the 21st, he purchased 500 more at $30 each. On October the 26th, he sold 400 at 50. And on the 31st, happy Halloween, he sold 120 at 55. Now, part A says, using the stock form provided, determine the value of the tires remaining in stock at October 31st, 2009. And Joe Mukram uses the life form method of stock valuation. Okay, so before we get into the question, if you need to check out my stock valuation video, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So if you're not familiar with stock valuation or you feel a little shaky with it, check that video out first and then come back here and watch this video. Okay, let's pull up on this side now the stock valuation sheet or the stock form they call it right so we have a little format looking like this you have a column for dates a column for your purchases the quantity the number of units and the price per unit same thing for sales and we have a balance at end and an extra column for the value all right so now let's start populating this item here so we're going to go back across to the table so on october the first we are seeing that we have an opening balance of 150 units at 25 dollars per unit all right, so we're going to put that in. So October the 1st, we have 150 units at 25 per unit, giving us a value of $3,750 in total. Now, on October the 10th, we purchased 200 units at $27 each. So we are going to put that in. On the 10th, we purchased 200 units at $27 each. So now we are going to have two batches of stock at end. The first batch that we had as open in stock, and now we have a second batch which we just purchased, 200 at 27 each for a value of 5,004. And the total value of closing stock now is going to be the sum of those two figures, giving us 9,150. For uh, And of course, that applies to the total of 350 units, which comes from two different batches. Now, on the 15th of October, we have a sale. We sold 230 units at $50 each. Let's put that in first. So on the 15th, we sold 230 at $50 each. Now, under LIFO, which is last in, first out, we're going to sell from the last batch in first. So we have to sell 230. We're going to sell from this batch first. Now, this batch only has 200 units. So it's going to be totally used up in the process of the sale. Now, the next 30, because we're selling 230 and this batch only has 200, so we need 30 more from somewhere else. That's going to come from this batch on top here, the opening stock batch. Now, when you sell what 30 units from 150, you're going to have 120 left. And that's going to be 120 units at $25 each with $3,000 worth of stock. Okay. On the 21st, we have another purchase, 500 units at $30 each. So let's put that in. So we bought 530. So now we have two batches of stock, the 120 at 25, which was left over after the sale above. We have the new batch, 500 at 30 each, giving us 15,000, sorry. And we're just going to add going down. So 3,015 gives us 18, 120 and 500 is 620. Now what's happening after that on the 26th? We sold 400 at $50 each. Now let's put in that sale first. So on the 26th of October, we sold 450. Now, again, on the LIFO, we're going to sell from the last batch that came in first. Now, this batch has 500 units in it, and we only have to sell 400. So this batch can be used to fully satisfy the sale while still leaving 100 from it. And then this batch of 120 is untouched. So we're going to put the 120 at 25 because none of the units from that batch had to be used for the sale. We're going to put 100 at 30 and of course we're going to add going down both the number of units so 120 and 100 gives us 220 and 3 and 3 gives us 6000 right now this 220 makes sense because prior to that sale we had 620 units 
and we sold 400. So 620 minus 400 gives us 220. All right. I think we have one more item. We have on the 31st of October, we sold 120 units at $55 each. Okay. So again, let's just put in the sale first. We're going to put in that we sold 120 at 55. Now it's quite tempting just to sell out this first batch, but we're not using first in, first out. We're using last in, first out. So to sell 120 on the LIFO, we're going to have to sell from this batch of 100 first, last in, first out. Now this batch cannot fully satisfy the order of 120. It can only, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It can only um, serve, no, it's not, it's, <laughs> I can't find any word. <clears throat> this batch only provides 100, but we need 120. So after we sell out this whole batch, we're still going to have to pull 20 from on top here, which will leave us with 100 units at $25 each, giving us 2,500 units in closing stock. Okay, so that's the end of part A. Let's take a look at part B. So part B is asking us to prepare a trading account for the month ending October 31st, 2009. So of course, you know what you have to do? Properly head up your statement. Joe Mukram, trading account for the month ended October 31st, 2009. The first thing we're going to start with is the sales. So it's 38,100, but where did that come from? Let's go back to the information. We had three sets of sales. We sold 230 at 50, and then we also sold 400 at 50, and then the last batch, was 120 at 55. So you're seeing a work in here, 230 by 50 plus 400 by 50 plus 120 by 55. So remember to find the value, we'll take the number of units and multiply by the selling price. So price by quantity will give us the revenue. And we had three sets of sales. So we have three sets of multiplication to do, 230 by 50, 400 by 50, and 120 by 55. Now, we had no returns in, anything like that, so we're going to go straight to cost of goods. So now opening stock, again, that came from the table. The table gave us opening stock, 150 at 25. So when you multiply 150 by 25, you're simply going to get the 3750. The purchases, now that also requires some calculation. We only had two sets of purchases. The first was on the 10th of October, right, 200 at 27, and the second was on the 21st of October, 500 at $30 each. So just like with the sales, you're seeing a working here, 200 by 27, right? Price by quantity plus 500 by 30. That gives us $20,400 worth of purchases. Adding that to the 3750 above gives us 24,150. Now we have to subtract closing stock. And remember, that was what we used the stock form in part A to calculate, closing stock of $2,500. When we subtract that from the 24,150, we're going to get a cost of goods sold of 21,650, which we then subtract from the sales figure of 38,001 to give us gross profit of 16,450. Okay, that's it for this question. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question six from the May 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and please be sure to check out my website where you'll find some free interesting PUA handles. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.